Hey guys, I'm back with the last part of making the multi-piece removable handle scales with the chamfered edges. We're going to take these handle scales and make them look like what you see on the screen. On the last couple videos we made the handles the different sections of materials with the liners and spacers. We went through and drilled for the screw holes, did the countersinking for the screw heads, and did all the shaping around the edges. And on this video we're going to grind the chamfers around the edges and do some hand sanding to clean up all the scratches. I recommend using a tool rest to grind the chamfers. You can do it freehand, but it's a lot easier to get everything even from side to side. Up first, we're going to go over and grind the top chamfer. Just work our way around the handle and use a 4 inch contact wheel to grind the finger choil. So let's get to it guys. I'm going to hollow grind the chamfers with the 12 inch wheel. You can use any size wheel or you can flat grind them with the flat platen. I'm also using the DDR work rest tool rest with the Fear 454. I have the angle set around 50 degrees, but the angle really depends on how wide you want your chamfers, so it's totally up to you. I'm starting with the 60 grit aluminum oxide. When you go to grind, you want to make sure your handle's nice and flat, and you want to give it some upward pressure, and you want to do nice consistent passes. Just keep it moving. You don't ever want to stop, just keep it moving and follow that edge. If you have a big curve right here, you're going to have to use the edge of the wheel and just do the same thing. Do consistent passes and just keep it moving. Alright, I have the top part roughed out. I'm going to go through each grit, the 60, the 120, the 220, and then the X45 Norex. But I'm just going to show the 60 grit because it's all the same. I'm going to go through each step. Up next, we're going to do that curved part. And like I was saying, if you have a drastic curve, you're going to have to use the edge of the wheel and just do nice consistent passes. I have a more subtle curve, so I'm going to go in straight, but I'm still going to use the edge of the wheel. And right after that, we're going to do the top part. Just do nice consistent passes on both sides and then I'm going to flip the grinder on its side and do the 4 inch wheel. But right now we're going to do that curved part. I have the power set to around 30%. I find if I move too slow or give it too much pressure that the edge of the wheel will dig in. So I like to do quick passes with a light touch and consistent pressure. I just use the 60 grit to rough everything out. And then I use the 120 and the 220 to clean everything up and make it look nice and even.
I'd like to get it close with the 60 and then I'll clean it up and get it even with the 120 and clean up the scratches with the 220 and the X45 and whatever's left I'll get rid of when I do the hand sanding you can tell it's a little uneven by this corner point if both of these edges were even they would intersect right at that corner I'll get them lined up and even with the 120 you can use a little WD-40 on a rag to wipe the G10 dust off and kinda get an idea of what it's gonna look like it looks really rough it has a lot of scratches it'll start to come together with the higher grits and it'll look a lot nicer when we get these scratches cleaned up I'm gonna start working on the top part you just want to do the same thing quick passes on both sides and follow that edge it'll go really quick I have that top part roughed out. I'm going to go through the 120, the 220, and the X45 before I do the finger choil. I just like to have them finished when I get to that point. I find it easier to get everything even if I have them finished first. I have another set of handles that I'm working on that are finished up to the X45. They still need the hand sanding and all the scratches cleaned up, but you kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. It's a little discouraging with the 60 grit finish. It doesn't really look that nice at this point. So I just wanted to show you what they look like with a higher finish. I went through the 120, the 220, and the X45 Norax. There's still some scratches left, so we're going to go through and do the hand sanding before we do the finger choil because the finger choil doesn't really leave scratches like the edge of the wheel does. I have two 8 inch drill bits in my vise. They're spaced apart wide enough to hold the handle. The handles just snap on. I also made a sanding block that's the same shape as my 12 inch wheel. And I'm just going to use it to go along the chamfers and to sand all the scratches off. You want to give it even pressure. Just like grinding you just follow the edge and you want to make sure you don't rock towards the top, the flats it's easy to wash the lines out and it doesn't look very nice when you do that I find if you use a higher grit finish on the flats it ends up becoming a fingerprint magnet so I like to use a lower finish like a two-tone effect with the chamfers at a higher finish and the flats done at a lower finish I have a piece of steel surface ground and the edges are rounded over I'm using 400 grit sandpaper you want to make sure you're holding the sandpaper nice and tight and you want to do full passes and you want to make sure that you have it nice and flat and don't rock it all it's easy to wash those lines out I'm gonna start doing the chamfers now the exact same way Just flip it over and do the same thing on the other side.
I find it easier to see scratches if I take them off and just move them around and check them out. Which there is still a few scratches I need to clean up. The chamfers. Still need to do a few more passes on both sides. But it's starting to come together. It won't take long now to finish it up. It's really easy to see the scratches if you wipe a little WD-40 on the handle. It kind of gives a shine and you can really see all the little scratches. They really stand out. You can see that I need to put more pressure towards the flats on the handles because I try to put more pressure the other way so I don't wash the flats out. That's where all the little scratches are building up. If you don't have a sanding block the shape of your wheel, you can just use a piece of sandpaper on your finger and just be very careful. You can also just flat grind the chamfers. It's a lot easier to sand them if they're flat. There's still quite a few little scratches on the chamfers and I still need to do a few passes on the flats to clean everything up. I'm going to do that and then we're going to move on to the 4 inch wheel and do the finger choil. You can also use your granite plate to do the flats. I find it easier just to use the vise I'm already using because I'm already doing the chamfers. You just want to give it even pressure and do long passes. And don't rock either way because it's really easy to wash the lines out. You want to make sure the sandpaper is glued down nice and flat. But we're going to go over and do the 4 inch wheel now and do the finger choil. I have those standoffs holding the handles together again. It gives you a little something more to hold on to when you're grinding. I'm using a 4 inch contact wheel. And if you don't have a 4 inch contact wheel, you can use the tracking wheel. The tracking wheel is also 4 inches. When you go to grind, you want to make sure the angle is the exact same on both sides. Or the finger choil chamfers will be a little uneven. It's all about the pressure. You want to give it forward pressure and back pressure. And you just keep playing with both until you get it right. It's really easy to screw this part up, so I like to take it slow. I have the power set around 220 the x45 and the x22 right now I'm going to hand sand this front curve and I'm also going to do the hand sanding on this top curve after you put the handles on and you're doing your finishing work you want to make sure you round this point over it can be a hot spot it pokes into your side when you're wearing the knife in the sheath so you want to make sure it's rounded over I have the handles wrapped in a shop rag just so I don't scratch them when I hold them in my vise I'm using a piece of 5 8 bar stock. You can use anything round to sand the curved parts. Just wrap the sandpaper around and hold it tight. You want to do full passes and just blend everything together. You want to make sure you do this part with the standoffs in. So whatever you're taking off is equal from side to side. 
I'm going through the 400, the 800, and the 1500 grit. Once you get these two parts hand sanded, you just slap the handles on and do your regular finishing work. The handles are pretty much done. You can see that two-tone effect I was talking about. The chamfers are a glossy finish and the flats are more of a matte finish. I could probably do a couple more passes on the flats to make the lines a little more crisp. I find the hardest part when doing the finishing work is not rounding over the lines. You gotta be extremely careful when doing the flats or when hand sanding the chamfers. It's really easy if you put too much pressure to one side or the other to round those lines over. You can see once you get all the lines even they will line up and intersect right where you want them. I really like how you can see the grain of the G10 inside the chamfers. G10, carbon fiber, and micarta all have similar grains. They all look similar with that chamfered edge. You can see all the layers of material. If you use a smaller wheel, you'll get more of a hollow grind. You'll see the curve more. It's not really that drastic when using a 12 inch wheel. You can make the chamfers any size. You can make them smaller or bigger. You can play around with the finger choil and use different size wheels and you'll get different effects. I like to use a set of digital calipers and then I'll measure the chamfers that way I can get them even from side to side. You can also tell if they're even if the screws are directly in the middle of the flats. You can also use the small wheel attachment to grind the chamfers. I haven't had a lot of practice with it but from what I've noticed it works really well with curved handles. I'm going to start doing it this way eventually but for now I'm going to stick with what I've been doing. Just one last thing before I end the video. This spacer is a weak spot. It doesn't have a screw holding it down. So I like to drill two quarter inch holes on the back side and fill it full of epoxy. I'm using a shop rag on top of a one, two, three block just so I don't mar the handle. I like to drill right over top of the spacers. And then I use an eighth inch drill bit after the quarter inch to peck a little hole inside. That way the epoxy has a little extra to hold on to. You want to be very careful to not drill right through the handle, especially when you're using the 8th inch bit. You can see the green G10 spacers inside the holes. I'm going to bring them over, clean them really well, and then start filling them up with epoxy. I'm using green painters tape to mix the epoxy. You want to use the 24 hour stuff. The 5 minute stuff is just too brittle. I got this from True Grit. When making the multi piece handles, it's a very thin layer of epoxy holding everything together. So by drilling these holes and filling them up, it just gives it that added strength. The best way would probably be to add a screw to the spacer or to even dovetail it. I'm using a razor blade to scrape off any extra and make it flush. It's been 24 hours. The last thing to do is just make sure you have everything sanded flat before you put the handles on. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to try to get videos out quicker. It takes me anywhere from two to four weeks to get one finished. So I got to find a way to speed things up. But anyway, have a good one guys.